Hello everybody, welcome back to Grumpy Magic 2. So last time, I think, I can't remember what's ha what happened last time. Uh, okay, last time, uh, we did have very good success. We didn't score any points in the last three races. However, we've only got two races left in the championship. And right now, we are seven, we're six in the constructors behind Benetton and Arrows. So I think we... We, we, for Zach Speed, we've done an alright season, even though we are vastly outscored by Ferrari, McLaren, and Lotus, but we are back mark our team, so to get six, to beat Williams, out of all the, peop out of all the teams, uh, I think it's quite an achievement. Anyway, before we go to the, the Suzuka Grand Prix, I'm going to have a look, see if, uh, if Ligier have anything worth taking. Yep. It can take their EMS or their cooling system. So let's see uh, if I can get in to Ligier. Uh, nope. Can I try again? Nope. Okay, so who is this on three? Terrell, Minardi, and LaRousse. What does Terrell have? He's got a better gearbox. That might be worth taking. Minardi. Have a bet. Uh, you know, they, they've got a better brake system. And the Roos. They've got... Better suspension. So I might go to... Oh, not that one. I might go to the Roos first for the suspension. Alright. Car internals. Can we acquire their suspension? Uh... That's 12, there's 18, so that's not really worth taking. Do we have any externals? They've got better side pods than us, and better veins. Oh, side pods? Okay. I might offer a deal for the roofs. If I go for their veins, yeah, they're, they would want our electrical system, which I'll, I'll happily get, but for 7,500, for 83% fiends, I think that's a literally good, a good deal. So, it means our car's heavier, but we've got much, much better veins now. So, refit with best parts. Uh, do you want to, are you sure you want this? No, don't put it in the car then. Use parts. Best, yes, no. Uh, yes, no, okay, so let's now load up the setup and then we'll make our way to Suzuka. Alright, we're at Suzuka and as you can see here, it's mixed conditions, so this is going to be a bit of a struggle because, well, with rainy conditions, it's going to be really difficult for both sack speed drivers to keep this car on, keep their cars on the road, even with wet tyres on. But let's just see how they will do in these wet conditions against Barragher and Alboreto. 151, 154. Ginzi is just about a second quicker than Barragher. Schneider is two seconds slower. Not big surprise there, 156, 155, yeah. Okay, I'm su surprised that Ginzi's still the third quickest and Bern Schneider is faster than the Nini, so, okay. I think we may be in with a shout, but I'm not expecting much. But anyway, let's move on to the qualifying where it's going to matter the most, so... I'm actually going to do something a bit different because it's still raining. I'm going to wait till further down the session and see if it dries up. Okay, about three quarters in the se session and then you can see it's not dried up. In fact, it's gone heavier. So maybe I've made a bit of a, vial a fatal mistake here. So we may end up roughly at the back of the grid. But we're just going to get out there and see what we can do. And just hopefully, hopefully, we've not, I've not screwed up the possibility of a good good qualifying position. Okay, the session's ended. Stefan Johansson's not taking part. Lururi for Eurobrun's not taking part. Campus for Minari's not taking part. We're still 10th and 13th. Um, okay, well both Williamses are ahead of Ginzi. 
Uh, Parasala is an 11, so that's really interesting if that Parasala managed to do that. But anyway, Gerard Burgess and Paul, the knees in second, Albert L's third, both Lotuses. Oatson, Derek Walk seventh, both Williamses, Ginsey, Parasala, Irving Capelli, Schneider, Eddie Cheever, both McLarens are down the field somehow, Palmer, Winklehop from March, Ali, Modena, Julian Bailey, Dalbert, and Rennie Arnew at the back of the grid. Okay, let's do this. And no one's stolen their car. Okay, so we're still 13 to 10, and uh, see the rain is simmered down a little bit, but that's not really going to help. It's not going to change anything at all, especially when, since we still have our wet tires on. But anyway, the Japanese Grand Prix is ready to go now. No one has stalled their car. We're still 10th and 13th. So let's make sense by going to this TV camera here. Okay, 23 cars still there. Okay, no, no one's mysteriously disappearing. And, well, we're getting to already two seconds behind Ricard Patrice. Not surprised there. Schneider is, well, he's about one second behind Ivan Capelli's march at the moment. Okay, Alvarez coming to the pit on lap eight for a very, very early stop. And so is Elliot. They must be doing three-stop strategies because why would you pit that early? I mean, now some people are pitting... Uh, already. Parasal has already retired, so that's put Schneider in 11. So, uh, getting season 10, Schneider's in 11, so that's okay. Um, okay, people are coming to the pits, we're now 8th and 10th. Well, Derek Warwick separating the arrows. And now Nigel Mansell is also. I mean, hopefully Nigel Mansell can help the Williams have a great point. And Boatson for Benetton has already retired. Okay, Ginzi in a points position, but I think he's going to lose it, especially when he comes in to do his stop because, well, he hasn't pitted yet. Uh, Ricard Patrice is now separating both sack speeds now. Ginzi, Ginzi's here. There's Alberen Berger, so he's, he's been lapped by them. There isn't any cars approaching him, and he's going to come out. He's coming in six. Now Schneider is going to come to the pits now. Now, where will he come out? Will he maintain 8th place, or will Mansell, Prost, Warwick, Senna, Cheever, Capelli, Palma, Bailey, Dalmas, and whoever else may overtake him? 8.9 seconds in the pits. Okay, uh, he's been passed by a lot. He seems to be passed a lot of cars, so he must be going down the order, and the rain's have gone heavy again. He's down to 14, so... I think it's fair to say Schneider is pretty much out of the running in this Grand Prix, especially since a lot of cars had passed him, and to be honest, I kind of expected him to drop down the order because Schneider is really, really slow, so he does quite a good job at holding a huge train up. Eddie Cheever for the hours is retired, and Julian Bailey is also retired, so I wonder what's happened to any achiever there, because he, he was doing actually alright. Um, especially his teammate Derek Warwick. And stuff. Nelson Piquet has retired. Okay, that's a big surprise there. That's going to put Ginzi to 5th place now, and Ayrton Senna is finally going to be in the points position. And Nelson Piquet was quite far ahead of Ginzi, but Ginzi's struggling to pass him now. Oh, there we go, he's finally got passed. Ivan Capelli and Alessandro Nannini's retired, so Ginzi might actually have a chance to get some half-decent points in this race. Okay, new tyres. 9.5 seconds in the pits. Oh, huge. Now the train of cars going past there, so he's going to drop down the order. It's going to be from 4th to... 9th. He's down to 9th. He's behind his teammate Schneider. Now... Schneider's going to come to the pit, 17 laps worth of fuel just to get to the end. 9 seconds exactly. Now, is he going to stay ahead of his team? He is going to stay ahead of his teammate. Schne Schneider, slow on the track, but quick in the pits. That seems how it is. And the track's drying now. I don't really see the point of changing tyres, because I don't think it's going to dry out in time for the real need to change top to change. Nigel Mass has come back to the pit, so he may end up going to dry tires. The thing is he might be the only one that would. Uh I don't know. 
I don't really think it's a good idea to go back to the pits just to change tyres, so I'm going to probably stick to the end of the race. It might work, it might not work. Um, I don't know. We're just gonna, I'm just going to hope for the best. Especially since there's only about five laps to go for Berger. I think Berger's lapped everyone. Oh no, he hasn't lapped his teammate. I thought he had, but... Uh, Genzi has, in fact, retired. But he was stuck behind uh, Bernd Schneier, so it doesn't really, it's not really going to make any impact. Uh, okay, some people are coming into the pits for tyres. Schneier isn't. Alien Prost is retired. Okay, everyone's coming to the pits except Schneider, so Schneider might actually get one point from this Grand Prix. That is going to be quite good. And Gerhard Berger is going to win yet another Grand Prix. And we're actually, we actually are going to score one point in this race, which is, which is more than ha more than good enough for us. So Bernard Schneider managed to keep that car on the road just to the end. And Genzi, he'd spun off, but he was he was pretty much out of the running. And so Schneider being Patrice and Derek Warwick, well done for him for that. And Bernard Schneider is still seventh in the drivers' championship, and we gained one point. But even though we, it means we stay in six, but so it was good. It's good. I'm happy with that. I'm very happy with that. Uh, need to get a new chassis though. That's not great. Turbo still level three. Got the car finished, and we got ten thousand dollars, which is something. Perez Salah injured, missing the next five races. So Perez Luigi Martini will get to take part in the last Grand Prix. So that's good for him. For for I had the championship, they pretty much dominated for the entire season. So I think that's a bit of a, uh, just undercutting uh, Ferrari's performance. Won the last nine races. Jeez, nine races on the bounce. Okay, we're at Adelaide now, and as you can see, it's a permanently dry track, which should play favour to us a bit more. Because I like, I'm, I'm, I prefer it when it's just permanently dry conditions, because, well, it just means you don't have to worry about the track getting rainy and dry up, because I just panic at it, and I'm not good doing with that. 119 from Ginzi, Schneider, 122, and Berger four seconds faster than Ginzi. Now, Ali, I think it's a, I think Ali's quite a short track, especially in comparison to Melbourne. I don't really know what the Ali track's like because this is like before my time, obviously. But looks cool. I think I saw a video about unloved top ten unloved tracks. I think Adelaide was on the list, I can't remember now. But then we have to can see, oh, uh, we are way off the pace in comparison to Lotus, Bennett and Ferrari overall. So, we went to qualifying and just hope for the best because I don't see us uh, being contention for the front, for the first, the top six. I don't think we're gonna, I don't think we're gonna be up there for the qualifying. Anyway, they're gonna do or die. Okay. Ricard Patrice is the only person who will not be taking part. Bernd Schneider is in third. Ginzi's 23rd. The only, per the only people he's beaten is Patrice and both minorities. So Ginzi is pretty much already out of it. We've not even started. So yeah, this is going to be a bit. This is not going to be fun for us. Okay, both Fries in the front row. Schneider in third. Both McLarens. Both Benettons. Cheevers in 8th, Mondina in 9th, Ivan Capelli 10th, Nigel Mansell is down in 11th, Snacks in 12th, Winklehawk, Lurie, both the Roosters, Stefan Johansson, Julian Bailey, Rene Arnoux, Julian Palmer, PK is down 21st, Warwick, Ginzi, Martini, Campos. I'm surprised PK is so low down the field, I didn't even realise that he was just so low. I think, is, I think what I'm doing is a bit of a long shot, but we're going to give it a go, because I can fit 32 laps worth of fuel in the car. And because 81 laps in this track, so I'm pretty much going for long stints here. So this might be, this might not be an ideal strategy, but we're gonna give it a go anyway. Derek Warwick has stole his car. Oh no, wrong button. Derek Warwick, I think he caught, I think he did all right. So that's a big blow to him. 
Well, I say that he actually no, he actually only qualified in front of Ginzi, and that's about it. I was thinking about the other guy, the achiever. But anyway, the Australian Grand Prix and the last Grand Prix of the first season of the Smallest ready to go now. Okay, no one stole their car. Ginzi will gain a place only because well, the achiever is in the is stole his car. But anyway, let's make sense by going this TV camera here. So there were. Where is it? Where is his, where is his t teammate then? Yeah, uh, he was eight. So I, I was mistaken both of them. And Alien Prost has got past Schneider. Uh, Schneider's dropping down the order. I kind of expected him to. And I think Julian Bailey got a penalty, but again, he's just so underpowered to, to be, able, be able to catch him. Oh, both Benettons have retired at the same time. So Boatson and the Nini have retired. Okay, so that's that's definitely going to take the heat off Schneider because both Benetton's are like right behind him. Nigel Mansell has retired. That's a shock and a half that Nigel Mansell's gone from this Grand Prix. Stefan Johansson's retiring. Okay, we are getting some we're crazy amount of retirements in already, and we're we're not even start we're not even we're not even close to doing our first pit stops yet, and already we've got just chaos here already. Gerhard Berger is now retired. Dalmas is retired. Gerhard Berger, who is like winning race after race after race, now he's retired from the race. So he's not going to make it ten races in a row. Uh, okay, Ivan Capelli is overtaking Bernd Schneider, so I'm kind of surprised that he managed to do that. Uh, oh, who's that retired? That's no, Julian Palmer. Uh, Nelson Piquet, who's qualified solo down the field, he's built up the places. So good on Nelson Piquet for being able to, for getting all the way back up to fifth, and he's actually got past Schneider also. So Schneider's dropping some positions here. Okay, uh, who's coming to the pits first? You'll begin to I think. Yeah, Ginzi's in the pits. Thirty laps worth of fuel. Uh, there's no really point of him being in there, especially since he's solo down the field. Uh, Schneider's coming to the pits. Um, okay, double stacking is a problem here. Where is Bernd Schneider? He's there again. Back to the pets. Oh, hang on, uh, best way on pause the game. And Schneider is, I think Schneider is out because he did, because since he got skipped past the, uh, they're both retired. Great, okay, that's not a good way to end our season now, so we're just going to have to sit back and watch this race now. Schneider's definitely ran out of fuel because Ginzi was there in the wrong place at the wrong time, and Ginzi was tiring is definitely a different matter entirely. Well, Ivan Capelli is retired. I mean, Ivan Capelli was doing really well for the march to be in the top six, and now he's retired from the race. That's going to put his teammate Winklehawk in the points. Is Winklehawk going to score? Is going to finally score points for his for March? You know, he's replacing his other, the other driver that's been injured. I can't remember who it is now. But Winklehawk may actually be able to show to finally score a point for March. And we've got about six, five laps left to go. It looks like Alboreto is going to win for Ferrari. Alien Prost, it looks like it's going to get second. Nakajima's just retired, so all the pressure from Winklehawk has been removed. Uh, Senna's going to get third. Eddie Cheever is going to get fourth, which is great for ours. Nelson Piquet, who starts way down the field, is going to get, probably get fifth. Winklehawk, he's, going to get, he's probably going to get sixth place, which is just... We're, we're witnessing a very big moment here for March. So Alborel from Pross from Senna. What a way to end the season here. To see Winkahawk finally score a point for March. He knew he was only there temporarily. Uh, Schneider, oh, Schneider had his tyre burst. He didn't run out of fuel. But he was going to run, he would have run out of fuel anyway because he uh, didn't stop. And again, he spun off immediately, pretty much shortly after he left the pit lane. So that's the end of the 1988, well, for the first season of this mod at least. Gerard Berger, look at that, dominance if I have seen it. Both Fries and both McLarens, Nielsen Piggy fifth, and both in A. Cheever tied with Schneider, that's quite good to see. And Ginzi only scoring three points, and we've gone for next season. And as we can see, six, we still finished sixth place 
in the constructors. That is great. We def now for next season. We're we're definitely we should probably aim for the top four at least. Try and be up where ours has finished. Think think that might, I think that might be a bit too ambitious, but hey, well, why not? If ours can do it, so can Zach Speed, right? In the graph, yep. We didn't really score any points here, but works. But we expect that might change. Okay, excuse me. Uh, Brazil, San Marino, Monaco, Mexico, Canada, America, France, Britain, Germany, Hungary, Belgium, Italy, America again. So something's changed. And well, we're gonna be the Honda engine now. Uh, oh, I don't know what to go for now. Uh, we'll probably go for. We'll go with. Um, Okay, let's go with that just to save a bit of money. Uh, we want the best tires at least. And we want best secure. No, that's spares, not security. Best security. Tero, Minardi, and LaRusso want going for the best security. Who's going for half a star? Ligier. Alright, level 4 for Turbo. Yep, good year, Elite. Okay. Uh, oh, it's, ah, the Portuguese Grand Prix is replaced by Phoenix, which is also America. Turbo's banned. Advanced steering now can be used. So, okay, so we're going to figure this. So we have to stop using turbo. We're going to go to the advanced steering lane. Cooling system and gearbox are uh, being limited. Now let's get some chassis. And continue. FBI survey finds security firms offering poor surface developments in tight technology. Alter venue ch rule change. Ferrari wins the title. Good on Ferrari. And he won his first championship. Which is good to see. Good to see. And. Another year rules by for Zach Speed. Yep, we got that right. But anyway, let before we go, let's check. Let's look at our dry uh, the driver lineup. We'll start with Zach Speed. Obviously, we've got Gins here for another season. We've got Johnny Dumfries and we've got Alan Berg, which I think is quite good to have. Okay, even though Johnny Dumfries. He's good. He's I, we got him because he's quite cheap, and I think we he can actually uh, pull something off, even though we don't have Bernd Schneider anymore. But Bernd Schneider was got double but double the salary, but he didn't really have as much pace. Now uh, just gotta hope Ginzi will keep this keep his car on the road. Ferrari, Berger, Albrecht, and Ramil. They've kept their three drivers. Now they're they're probably gonna dominate uh, the the season again. Wouldn't surprise me if they did. Benetton, Boatson, Nanini, and they've kept Rebs as their test driver. And well, Alessandro Nanini prove he's actually do, he's actually doing quite well at Benetton, more better than he was at Minardi. Uh, Boatson's been all right also, but I think Nanini's out. I think Nanini has shown he bet he's got more potential than Boatson is to do well. Lotus, PK, Nakajima, and Donnelly, and they've they've already signed. They've got Donnelly for three seasons, and they've already signed their next drive, their next test drive to be Damon Hill. Actually, let me go back. Did they sign anyone? Else? Have they signed anyone else? Okay, no. It's just Lotus have signed Damon Hill to be the next test driver after th after three seasons. But we're not going to go all that far because we like to go to the other mods we got to go to. Alien Prost still and Ricard and Ricard Patrice is at Williams. I mean, Alien Prost is now at Williams. Now Williams, I think they're going to be a very much a very much a stronger lineup because they had a terrible season last time. Now if if they've changed their engines, then I think they're in better shape. But I don't think they have. So despite Alien Prost being there, I don't think they're going to be able to do well. And they've got Winklehawk, who is March's test driver, to be their test driver. Because Winklehawk did brilliant to get one point. Arrows, Dirt Work and Achiever. 
and Streif is their test driver, and they're planning to get Tarquini after after two seasons is up. Okay, interesting. March, Goldman, they've got Damon, okay, Damon Hill's there for one race, which for some reason, so I guess they didn't sign a second driver in time. But their next driver is going to be Nigel Mansell for March. And Ivan Capelli is a test driver. Okay, I think that's really bizarre and quite interesting. Okay, next up, Tyrrell with a four Cosworth. They've got Palmer, they've got Eric Comus, and Julian Bailey has been demoted to test driver. Okay, that's a really interesting decision by Tyrrell. Uh, but next, but after the contracts run out, they're going to swap positions. I don't really know how to react to that one, to be honest. I just think it's a bit bizarre. Uh, Parasal is still injured, so but they've kept Campos and Per Luigi Martini. So, good on them. Uh, I've got both of them are all on the three season contract, so I think but I think they've got that two hundred and fifty six race glitch thing that's happening that's happened. Uh Elliot and Dalmas still at LaRousse. Uh Raphael, which we haven't seen at all, uh still as a test driver. Lige, Renny Arnu and Stefan Johansson still there. They've got Jean Alessi as their test driver, a very, very expensive salary for their test driver. Hopefully Lige can uh, improve. Eurobrun. Eurobrun has Nigel Manso for one race, and they and the next drive is going to be Thwack, um, Thackwell. Uh, they've they've got the Ruri for three seasons, and they've got Mondino for two seasons. But after that, they're going to get Jean Alesi as their test driver. McLaren. They've got Ayrton Senna for two seasons. They've got Emmanuel Piro for three seasons. I have no idea who he is. Um, he's got no race. He's got no stats here. Let's uh, explain it. And then they've got Barella as their test driver. But once he's but once his once he's run out, Perro's going to be demoted to a test driver. So I think very interesting, very bizarre and bizarre choice. But then again, they've lost alien. The alien process gone to another team. Actually, I'm gonna. See, if I go to new drivers, go to experience, what have we got here? This Flatwell, Martin Brundle's still there. Um, I'm not planning, I'm not planning on um, changing driver, of getting another driver. I'm just having we look around. Uh, Christian Dan has not been signed, which I think is bizarre, because I think he's been, he did all right this season overall. Uh, oh, Giovanna Amati, income 7 million. I'm actually going to get her for a season. 7 million. You have to pay to terminate the contract. Oh, oh no, I don't want, don't want to terminate Ginzi. Drop test driver. Oh, you already placed a test driver. Yes, I am. I'm going to get Giovanna. Driver hire income 7 million. Yep. Okay, so we should get some money from... We should get the cash flowing in. Now, Giovanna Amati is the only female Formula 1 driver. And... I've seen... Uh, 19, I think it was 1992 she was driving for Terrell. Is it 992? Oh, I can't... Oh, okay, now I'm not sh so sure now. But I th I've seen it, and I think she, I think she did actually an all right job at it. But I haven't I haven't fully watched the the entire I haven't watched the entire uh, season review of it, so I don't know how she did overall. But I think she did. But I think she did all right. I think. I know, I should I, I should probably I should probably continue watching the DVD before I made that assumption, but. Uh, just put it out there. I've, I've, I've seen part. I've seen part of it. I've just not I finished watching it yet. Okay, we've got some potential sponsors here, so we can definitely get some money because we are definitely in financial trouble, and it's not good. Bar one. Now, hopefully, with this new dry lineup and the fact we've got bare engines, we should be have a fighting chance at keeping our Head above water. 
I'm not saying that we are though. I'm just I'm just kind of praying that now with Giovanna's there, she'll give us enough um, enough money to to keep just to stay financially stable. Okay, so all that's covered up. Now we gotta try and aim for three star sponsors now, so we can really start um, getting some money. Okay, and R and D. No, stop doing time. But we're gonna do advanced steering. Oh, hang on. Ah, oh, yeah, I need to stop. I need, they need to stop allocating the time there and go to advanced steering. There we go. And now we've got a new, our new designer, engineer, mechanic, and commercial manager. So we should be in good shape now. Manufacturing now. Oh yes, I kind of forgot about that. So we get some better brake system and suspension because well, they're not really that good. And um, I could replace parts, but no need to. And we need to go here and turn off turbo because that's now banned. So, okay, so let, I'm going to end this video here. So thank you guys so much for watching. Now, hopefully, next time we do this, fit, um, start we'll start the second season of this 1988 mod. And just hopefully, we've got the finances to keep going throughout the entire season. And just hope... And just hope uh, our Honda engine will keep us in the running to try and square off against Ferrari, uh, Benetton and Lotus. Because now we've got um, a faster and lighter engine, we should also, we should be fast, we should have the pace to keep up with them. But anyway, thank you guys so much for watching and goodbye! Well, they have no reason to, her, but they just do it anyway. Okay, I don't think any of these guys want help, but I'm not, I'll start to stick around it just to give them, uh, to, well, let them have it off the uh, key, key card. I mean, I don't say it out loud.